Alright, so I've purchased two CB750 support out and I was just about to cut the frame on the CB750F because a lot of people will swap the CB750F rear brake setup since it's a disc brake over to the CB750K frame. So I thought I'd just go ahead and sh show what's all involved in that because there's actually a lot involved to get the rear end off the CB750 to fit onto the CB750K. Alright, first off I'll show the difference in the frame. This frame right here is the CB750K. It normally has drum brakes on the rear, so that mount right there is for the rear brake pedal. That's really the only mount on here. That's just for the passenger foot peg. And if you move over to the F frame, there's these two mounts that holds a brake master cylinder for the rear disc brake. And then there's also the bracket right here, which is quite a bit different from the K bracket for the rear brake pedal. And get them side by side, you can tell it's a lot different. So you can either cut that bracket off and weld it on there, and it will just put it in a little bit of a different location. Or what most people do is they cut this whole bracket off right here, and they weld it onto this frame. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and cut off this little triangle piece right here because whoever buys this rear brake setup, they may want the whole thing, but I don't know, it's better to have extra than less. So I'll go ahead and start cutting that off. All right, now I'm going to start cutting the section of frame that I need. I went ahead and took some measurements on it. So anyone's doing this, they know exactly where to line it up. On the K model, the lower hole all the way to the rear motor mount is 11 and a half inches. And I mean, yes, you don't really need these measurements since if you already have a K model, but there's those measurements. And then for the F model, I'll try to demonstrate it on the actual frame. But from this furthest hole all the way to the bottom motor mount, that is 13 inches. And then from that hole all the way to the lower mount, that is going to be 10 and 3 quarters inches. And then from that little hole to that hole is 5 and 3 eighths inches. And then from this hole to the uh, very top motor mount all the way up there, it is 12 and 3 quarters inches and then the smaller one or the closer one to the top is 11 and a quarter inches and this hole to the top one is going to be 7 and a quarter inches so based on that you should be able to line up the holes where they need to be whenever I'm cutting this I'm just going to cut it right underneath that and then back here I'm going to cut it straight off this frame and then I'll cut try to get a better angle on it I'll cut it right around that bracket so whoever buys this they can just weld this right back on and then they can um, put a gusset inside the frame and then weld around it and that being cut straight they'll know where to line it up and then same thing with there they just have to butt it right up underneath that and line it up and then they can stick a gusset in and weld around it and I'll pretty much cut it the same on the other side but now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it all right now I'm gonna start cutting it off Alright, so now we got both the 
little length cut off. Now I'll just have to grab the rest of the parts that have taken off a bit for the brake kit and the brake kit will be done. And I've laid out pretty much everything you'll need to do the swap. You need the swing arm, brake pedal, you need the whole master cylinder assembly and the bracket for it. Then you'll need the rotor, the caliper, and then you'll also need the rear wheel. And my rear wheel is sitting down there. So this is pretty much the, the whole I guess, assembly you'll need to do the swap. But my caliper is pretty much froze up and there's a bolt that broke off inside the master cylinder. So I won't be putting all of this together as a kit. I'll just pretty much part it out separately. But this is pretty much everything that you'll need to do it. All right, so I thought I'd talk about it. I thought the swap is worth it to convert the rear to disc brake. The first thing is cost. The rear disc brake swap costs about $500. That's if you can just buy all the parts together. Um, the parts only pop up every once in a while because it's kind of rare to get the uh, F model whole rear end assembly. So I guess that's one downside. Another is the weight. Um, I went ahead and weighed everything that is extra on the disc brake swap. Um, the rotors, the rotor itself was 8.8 .8 and a quarter pounds. Um, the bracket was 1.8 pounds, the master cylinder was 1.2 pounds, caliper was 2.8 pounds, and then the difference in the swing arms um, with the bra extra bracket that the uh, F model has to have to locate the caliper, that was 1.9 pounds. And then I weighed with the wheels, and the weight may be a little different just because the two wheels had different tires on them. but. The uh, disc wheel was 40.2 pounds, and then the drum wheel was 46.6 pounds. So the drum wheel was only 6.4 pounds heavier than the uh, disc wheel, which is kind of surprising because the drum uh, adds some weight because there's uh, the shoes and everything in there, so that's really not that bad. And then the total weight increase for the disc is nine and a half pounds. So I guess doing the disc swap is actually gaining weight rather than losing weight. And on mod modern rig setups, it's, it will lose weight just because they use thinner rotors and uh, their calipers are a lot lighter. But for the single overhead cam, bikes they used really big calipers and stuff whenever they did their disc brakes so that's another downside is the weight savings there is none it adds weight and then another thing is time the whole swap i i haven't done the swap beginning to end but i think if i was to do it and you buy the parts and have them ship you for you to cut your frame out and then weld in bungs and then weld in the other kit. Um, and then you'd have to break brakes and everything. Shouldn't take too much time. I guess it'd probably be about six hours if you just went beginning to end and you knew everything that you needed. So I don't know, I wouldn't say that's a downside to it because that really isn't that long. Uh, another thing on is the cost to maintain the brakes. The, drum brakes to buy shoes. The replacements started at about like $18. And then whenever I looked at the uh, disc brakes, the replacement uh, pads started about $26. So disc brakes are a little more expensive. Also on the disc brakes, you're gonna have to be replacing fluid every once in a while. And when you do that, you have to bleed the brakes. So that's another thing. So disc brakes are a little more expensive to maintain. And then uh, another thing is, to me, drum brakes are more reliable. You don't have to worry about brake lines or anything like that. And they're pretty simple. All it is is just one rod that goes to the foot pedal. And then you have your shoes in there. Well, with disc, you have the caliper, the rotor, you have your brake lines, and then you have your master cylinder. And you have to make sure all of those are working correctly. So, it's a little more that can go wrong with it. Uh, 
Another thing is the performance of them. I, I don't know, I guess this is kind of like a big deal on it. To me, um, I have my CB550 back here, and I kind of thought about doing a disc bridge swap. I wasn't going to do an old disc bridge swap. I would probably swap some Rimbo calipers onto it, but whenever I looked at it, these brakes will lock up the rear wheel if you press the pedal all the way down. So to me, these drum brakes are, I don't know, they have all the performance that you really need for one of these bikes. If you can lock up the rear wheel by just pressing the pedal down, that's enough. And the, the feel on them is pretty good. You can feel it before it locks up. So it's not like, I don't know, I feel like the performance is there for what these bikes need. These bikes are really light and drum brakes work fine for what these are. And it's in the rear. If it was in the front, then yeah, I would go ahead and replace it. But for being in the rear, you, you don't really use that much of the brake. So, I don't know, I think the performance of the drums are fine. The disc brakes, they will outperform the drums. They have better feel to them, and they can probably lock it up a lot easier. But I don't really know if the uh, difference there is worth it. Um, so, I guess in the end, if it was my bike, I don't think I would do the swap. I think it costs too much, and it takes too much time to do it, and the gains are minimal. You get a little more braking power, but then you add about 10 pounds to the bike. There's also more to go wrong, and th this swap isn't just like, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's just a simple bolt-on swap. You do have to completely weld in the back half of your frame and change that out, so. If it was my bike, I wouldn't say this swap is worth it. I'd just go ahead and keep the drum brakes. Um, I'd just, I don't know, replace the shoes and readjust, readjust it and make sure that the uh, inside of the hub is clean and then your brakes will be fine. So for anybody doing this swap, I guess it depends how much time and money you have. If it's a look you're going for, then like my bike, there may be some things that I guess don't necessarily perform better or I guess perform a little bit better but I mainly did it because of looks so I went ahead and did it so if it's looks and yeah this swap may be worth it to you but you just kind of have to consider everything because I guess it weighs a little more it costs more has more time involved in doing it and in the end really what you have is disc brakes on a bike and a little bit more braking power. So that that's pretty much it. If you like the video, you can go ahead and give it a like. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this and go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.